Hello, everybody. This uh, first off, I'd like to say uh, thank you, Alex, for this suggestion and your donation. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is going to be on Klaus. A little bit about him and uh, about the dogs, the Klaus, the dogs that I was familiar with that that had uh, Klaus blood in them. You know, Bert Klaus was uh, his moniker or nickname was King of the Pit. Uh, he was known as a, you know, a conditioner, a breeder, uh, and maybe more prominently as a referee. Big booming voice, big guy, 6'6", six, six or something like that, you know. Uh, nobody messed with him, and not because he was that way, but because he commanded respect. He was fair and honest and uh, well-known, you know. You can research you know if you look at books and magazines you know you'll see him in there he's world renowned in the pit bull world and famous and uh, he knew all them old timers you know bob wallace maurice carver you see pictures of him with sorrels and and uh uh, uh gene carpenter and uh you know leo kennard corvino and all you know just list goes on and on he was he competed in the big conventions he refereed at the big conventions he bred uh a family of dogs you know and uh i'm sure there's there's still some of it around here and there you know like a lot of the old bloodlines after years and years of breeding it gets away from the breeder but there's still pockets of it with contemporary dog people to this day you know uh, he was from Missouri, and, and I would say his dogs, you know, not 100%, but most of them were comprised of, you know, the OFRN blood and a lot of Corvino stuff, Corcoran blood and Tudor stuff, you know. Uh, generally, in the past, most of the people that, that were known as breeders had some of the same blood, at least. Not all the same, but some of them shared uh, uh, the same bloodlines in their family of dogs as other people did, you know. Tudor had Corvino stuff, you know, Heinzel had uh, Corcoran, Corvino, Tudor, you know, Klaus had Corvino and Tudor and like that. Shipley goes back to Shipley and Feely and Leitner and all that stuff, you know, they were all getting dogs either from the same source or uh, from people that had those dogs from that source. And they bred their dogs uh, the way they wanted to, added whatever they wanted to add and tightened up on it and kept it and, and, and crossed it and line bred it, all that. So there's a lot of commonality in today's dogs because of that. They basically all go back to the same dogs. It's just the breeders preference when they put their families together of how much of this they want how much of that and then it gets to the point where it's their stuff and then how do they go about breeding that in, in the future you know some of his more famous dogs were were butcher boy four-time winner uh he was sired by uh mason's fudge out of mason's Mick, mickey you know clyde mason another uh uh midwestern you know famous dog guy you know, Mason's Hog, probably his famous, but he had a lot of other dogs too, you know, uh, uh, Mason and, and Trice uh, had had some of the same dogs, you know, that, that um, Klaus ended up with, you know, some of that blood, you know, um, one of the, one of the best crosses, I would say, with the Klaus blood is the Bolio blood, you know, you saw it in Red Baby, you saw it, and I'll get into that a little bit more later, but, but, uh, that stuff seemed to work, you know, real good together, uh, Butch Kinzenbaugh, who, if anybody knows, you know, me and Alex, or Alex, mostly, he puts together a confirmation show in Southern California every year, I generally judge it, I'm there, a lot of people come to it. It's a great show. And it was called, uh, he used the 
the term the Butch Kinzenbaugh Memorial because he's from that area. Kinzenbaugh was from San Diego area. Uh, I never really met him. I might have talked to him once or twice, you know, but I did meet his wife, Betty. Great people, his daughter, great, great people. And, and uh, you know, both Butch and Betty have now passed on, so rest in peace to them. But it's a good, it, it was a good, uh, th those are good times, and we had some good shows. We'll continue to have them in the future. Uh, you know, that's really where I got to see stuff kind of, it wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was straight off Butch's yard, but they're dogs that were from straight off Butch's yard. And they're a typey looking dog, you know, that Klaus Bo Leo, you know, you kind of see a little bit of both, you know, and, and they're more of the racy type, thinner boned, you know, uh, red, a lot of them are red, red nose, you know, and that red, red nose characteristic carries on generation after generation, you know, not all of them were like that. Some of the Klaus dogs from the past that, that I saw were more thicker bone, you know. They weren't all red, red nose. Some were brindle, you know, coming down from Butcher Boy, or or uh, they were red with a with a black nose, you know. But when you talk about you know straight Klaus stuff, over the years, you know, through the inbreeding and heavy line breeding and all that, they became more of the thinner bone, racy type, you know. Uh, and a lot of them were red, red, <coughs> red nose, you know. Uh, some of those. Uh, dogs from the Klaus blood in more modern times would be, uh, you know, LP's uh, Hobo Jack, or LP's, yeah, Ho champion Hobo Jack, I think he was a four-time winner too, uh, LP's uh, Ruby, you know, Little Bowley, Red Ruby, you know, uh, Baby Spike and Red Baby were, were litter mates, I don't know if anybody knows that, but they were litter mates and i mentioned that red danger dog was a, a bolio klaus white blood cross he was sired by baby spike which was red baby's brother you know and he had that that kind of racy look to him more of a pointy muzzle you know uh great dog you know um uh a lot of that stuff you know klaus is baldy uh was by Richardson Spike and uh, Richardson's Spotty. Richardson was was like a uh, like a partner with Howard Heinzel, you know. And if I'm correct, I think Baldy is the dog that uh, there's a story about. He chased a dog out uh, a raccoon out into the water into a lake with Bert Klaus standing there. You know, Klaus couldn't do nothing about it, and the raccoon drowned him. That's how Baldy was lost. There's a f picture of of one of his matches you know if you research you can find that i forget who he's going into i'm not sure if it was tudor or someone else but you, you can find klaus's baldy i think he's a white and dark colored spotted dog you know mostly white i think anyways uh you know you have that stuff coming down from shipley's red jerry and uh gimp you know goldie blood tudor's goldie is in the background of that blood and when you put it all together, you, you, depending on which way they went with it, you see the influence of those dogs in the more modern day dogs. And I think because that OFRN blood is so, is so concentrated, you know, that's where you see a lot of dogs that, that resemble that. They may not be called OFRN dogs, you know, old family red nose like that, but they, they retain a lot of those traits. It's just real strong blood. Even years and years later, you see it coming out in, in the dogs, you know. They're, they're built, along with being kind of racy looking, you know. And, and maybe this has something to do with why they put the Bolio and the Klaus together, you know. Uh, the, the Red Baby and, and, and that stuff, you know, is uh, the Klaus bud in, in, the Ray, in, in the Red Baby stuff goes back to Allen's mugs and and all that, you know, that, that stuff was out here in California. But the way they're built, they have real good balance. And and uh, because their feet are more, their front feet are more spread apart. So they kind of go straight down rather than coming like some dogs do. They come to a point or they're more bow-leggy like that. 
they're they're almost rectangular you know the chest is here in front and the feet come straight down that gives them great balance i saw that in a lot of bolio dogs bolio klaus dogs and you see it in the finley's bow dogs that same build from rc and the soso boys and tito and the local boys they have that build those dogs have great balance great wrestling ability you know the klaus dogs with the bolio dogs they're they're one of their uh, a few of their main attributes is that balance along with good air great heart but they have good wrestling ability too they can maneuver they can move they're fast intense like that so for me it was a good uh it was good to put them together because you have a lot of similarities between the two those particular two where you get the individual that that shared a lot of those traits and then you put them together they continue with those traits and you you improve their performance at the same time you know uh uh some of the 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 uh other ones like i mentioned they were more on the thick side you know more of the uh you know thick strong good bone in them like that you know gameness was always i think klaus from what i read and what people that knew him told me you know he was a stickler for gameness like a lot of them old guys back then you know so another reason for putting the klaus with the bolio or the red baby or whatever you want to call it you know the the lp stuff you know was you know they both shared that gameness trait you know and it's just a good way of, of keeping that trait going you know uh d d mobs grunt was another dog from there i remember reading about in the past he was a seven time winner had that klaus blood in him you know uh dogs uh, another you know if you want to match record to record you know corkins terry way back in the day was a seven time winner fast forward several decades you know and, and you have you have uh, d mobs grunt another seven time winner it would be interesting to know if there's any pictures of them if they resembled each other because they shared the same record so you have a dog from way in the past multiple winner and then fast forward to the future multiple winner you know to me it's impressive regardless of if it has a little bit of klaus blood or a lot of klaus blood in it it's just impressive that the blood can keep going that long and still have that performance and gameness base to it you know uh that the, another during my time always mentioned that you know people ask how this dog was bred and and uh you know they would always say well he's a klaus bred dog it was grand champion lucky strike steven company's grand champion lucky strike if you look him up he was a seven time winner you know uh um he looked they called him the bird dog because he looked he was patched like a hound dog you know known for his patience most of his fights were long distance hour hour and a half two hours over two hours like that he you know the reports say he was he was that type that would do just enough to stay ahead of his opponent you know and he would just uh a lot of patience good air long distances like he never he his engine never ran out you know uh he didn't produce that well but as far as a dog himself, he was just top notch in the heavy, heavy competition and, you know, uh, handling condition by, you know, a very good dog man, you know, uh, Steven company, he, he, he campaigned lucky strike. He also campaigned that CJ seven dog off a of Jeep and Dottie from, from, uh, Don bro, you know, he was, he was hot and heavy at one time, you know, uh, um, I mentioned that the, the Klaus dogs had a fair amount or a good amount of Corbino, Corbino blood, you know. Corvino was from Chicago, that area. One of the top breeders in that area was a guy named uh, Jim Wilson. And he had a lot of the Corvino dogs. I would guess that there's some, some uh, Klaus blood in his stuff he's not really well known except for the people that know him you know he's been mentioned by 
Aaron and Nate, Buffalo soldiers, knew, knew him uh, pretty well, I would guess. Was very familiar with him, got dogs from him, you know. So Jim Wilson would be another one of those proponents of the Klaus Blood and Corvino dogs, you know, from the Northeast, where it has a long history of uh, competition and breeding, you know. It's just a little shout out to, to Mr. Wilson. You know, he doesn't get mentioned that much, but like I said, the people that were in the know knew who he was and knew the kind of dogs that he put out, you know. If I was to say that I was familiar with dogs that had Klaus blood in them, it would be the dogs from Don Broke, you know. His champion demon was a, was a, was a son of Crenshaw's Rascal. The female they they, they bred uh, Rascal to to make Demon was a daughter of Stinson's champion Tuffy, and on his bottom side, it's that Bolio Klaus cross, right? Demon was a red dog rather than being black like Rascal, but he was a red dog with a. I'm pretty sure he had a black nose, but on his bottom side, it goes back to that Klaus stuff. Demon had a couple of short wins. He had a long distance win, 255, over a son of champion Jesse named Prof. Uh, they made several scratches, probably 20 or 30 scratches throughout the whole show. Uh, Prof was a son of uh, Reddick's champion Jesse, who was a litter mate to Smith and Burton's grand champion Hank. That's that blood. So Don took Demon, bred him to Joe Healy's Bloody Mary, and produced Omen. Omen's one of his, was one of his best producers. He produced several winners, some champions. Bloody Harry, again, goes back. It has some of that, that Klaus blood in it. I don't know if it was a conscious effort or if it just, you know, you're, they went from, Don went dog to dog and it's good blood or he knew the peds real well and he was doing it on purpose but it kind of doubled up when he did that with omen kind of doubled up the klaus blood you know on uh, where you have it it's influence albeit maybe just a quarter on each side you know putting it together and again that blood is so strong uh you know a lot of those dogs would come out red red nose you know omen was that way his a lot uh, not a lot but some of his offspring were that way in fact the ones we got from don that had that blood in it was country boys dusty cute petite that fine bone you know red red nose uh uh female you know who was very game she she stopped one of my dogs in in her game test in 50 minutes you know not a lot of ability not a lot of a mouth but a lot of speed, good balance, and just that die hard, never say die heart, you know. We took a dog that we had campaigned with, was uh, PB's champion Knucklehead. I mentioned him before too. Cat and Company used him. Tito and the local boys used him. We used him. Uh, we beat Vinny in, in 23 minutes with him. And Knucklehead was kind of like an old Eli on the top, bred to an inbred Jeep bitch on the bottom. Took that, bred him to Dusty, got, uh, what's her name, Roxy. And and regardless of whether she had, Roxy had some other blood in there, she came out like that Klaus side. She looked like that. A little bit thicker bone because she's a cross, but that red, red nose. Petite, acting, you know, kind of real feminine, you know, but just a monster, man. We beat Mr. K's tech set with her in about an hour and a minute, I think, you know. Our teeth were broken, but she could cut like a razor, you know. Uh, and and the point is that that blood is so concentrated, it comes out even later on in years when when you see uh, uh, outcrossing added to it, you know. It's just real strong blood. And, uh, you know, uh, we bred um, Dusty to Big Red, produced Miss Louise, and the Georgia Boys Red was a two-time winner. There were several good dogs. VC Kennels from, uh, you know, Victor Cruz, uh, rest in peace, Victor. Uh, he had some of that blood, too, did well with it, too, you know. 
So part of the point is even if you have a little bit of Klaus blood, you know, because it's not there's not a lot of it around. There, there can't be, you know, that that hasn't been watered down or ruined. Its influence is going to come out. And one of the main things they're known for is their heart, you know. So this is a little bit about the Klaus dogs. Thanks again, Alex. And uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Feel free to comment.